ma'am, we're glad for each and every one that has come out uh, to be with us this morning. Amen. And you pray that God will have His way in everything that is said and done. And amen. I've I, I done something, amen, that was, uh, that was real, real stupid. Amen. And, uh, but, brother, I, I tell you, uh, God had a way of a uh, way of using it anyway. Amen. I was studying over the other night. Amen. And uh, I found something in the scripture. Boy, I come up out of my recliner. I sat there in the recliner in the living room and had my other Bible sit there reading. And I come up out of the Bible and I said, Praise the Lord! I found what I needed. Amen. Amen. To go with it. And then I got home and I got to studying on it last night. And it was a wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> and man, I had found the wrong thing to go with what I was wanting to, to go with. Hey man, hey man, boy, I tell you what, you can't make the Word of God fit or it don't fit. Amen. Hey man. Amen. And I got the reading on that thing, and all it was, the light bulb come on. Hey, this is talking about something completely different. Hey man. Hey man, so you all pray this morning, hey man, that God will have His way in everything that is said and done. What a blessing it is to be here. Amen. I want to thank the church again for everything they've done for us yesterday. And we love y'all. Amen. And we uh, uh, thank the Lord for each and every one. We had a great time out there last night at the Judgment House. Amen. And, uh, but this morning we're back here. Amen. And, amen. I hope and pray today that God will just richly, richly bless you today. Amen. I hope and pray that He already has. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you got your Bibles and you want to read with us, we're going back in the book of Nehemiah again. Amen. And going to be down on the second gate. Amen. And uh, you pray today that God will uh, have His way. I guess out of all the gates, amen, in the Scripture uh, uh, to preach on, this one here would probably be one of the hardest ones. Amen. So, you pray today that God will help us, amen, and open up our minds and our thoughts, amen, and just uh, close us down and use us in a mighty, mighty way. But before we read, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, dear Lord, it's again, God, that we come to you thanking you, Lord, for this day. Thanking you, Father, for another time. Lord, we thank you, God, for another opportunity and what a privilege it is. Lord, to be in your house. And God, we pray, Father, you bless your word. And Lord, help us to stand. And God, this evening, Lord, and just to use us as a vessel this morning. Lord, that your name might be exalted above every name. And Father, we pray, Lord, if we've done or said anything, Lord, throughout this week that would hinder this in any way. Father, we pray, dear Lord, that you would just uh, forgive us and bring us up close to the cross and make preaching easy this morning and Lord how we love you and how we thank you and God everything that's done here today Lord we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise Lord in all of these things we ask in Jesus holy and precious name we do pray and amen and amen now there's a few names in the, in the Bible that I had trouble with amen I'll tell you that right off of the bat Amen. And, and if I missed uh, uh, pronounce some of them, amen, just forgive me and look over me. Amen. Because I'm just an old country boy and ain't had a lot of education. Amen. But I do know the Lord. Amen. amen. That's the main thing. Amen. He is knowing Him. But in Nehemiah, uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 3, he said, But the feast day did the sons of Hassanel Bill, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. Amen. So uh, if we had a thought to lay upon this this morning, we'd like to use a thought. Amen. The feast game. Amen. There is a spiritual meaning in behind the feast gate. Amen. There is a spiritual experience in behind 
uh, the feast day. Amen. We, first of all, we want to say that whenever Nehemiah and them come and they begin to build the walls, Amen. They had a lot of opposition. Amen. There was a lot of people that was trying to distract the workers. There was a lot of opposition that come from the world. Amen. This evening and some of them, they would even sit back and they would make fun of the walls that they was building around Jerusalem. Amen. One, I think it was uh, uh, Zezamel said that if a fox would even run up, uh, and lean upon the walls, they would collapse, amen, and try to dishearten uh, the people there uh, building the wall uh, around the Jerusalem. But might I tell you, a uh, man that God puts together, uh, amen, boy, I tell you what, it'll stand uh, through the test of time. Uh, I'm glad today whenever God puts something together, uh, he knows how to fit it together uh, and to make it work. But anyway, uh, uh, they created what they call uh, uh, the feast gate. Now the feast gate uh, uh, was one of the main gates uh, uh, that entered into the city. Uh, it come off of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, amen. It come down by the river. Uh, and there was a gate there uh, that was called the feast gate. Uh, I don't know how many uh, of you all have experienced it. Uh, amen. But when a feast dies, it speaks the high heavens. Amen. I could imagine that this gate had an odor about it. Amen. The word, if you wanted to find it, I believe your nose would lead you right to it. Amen. Boy, it was a gate that was different than any gate. But they allowed, amen, during this time, they allowed the murder. And they bring their uh, fish and their other things uh, in there, amen, that they might sell uh, and they might make a living. Uh, amen, boy, God expects amen. us uh, uh, to make a living. Uh, uh, but like everything else, uh, amen, the greed uh, begin to drive the people uh, that begin to cause uh, problems in the court. Amen. I believe the number one thing that Jesus is telling us here at the feast gate, amen, is that we need to keep the temple of God, amen, separate, amen, from business. I believe what Jesus is trying to tell us here that the temple is set up as a sanctuary, amen, and that sanctuary is a place where we come in and we come in and we serve God. Amen. This evening it is a place to where we come together and we worship the Lord. Amen. I don't believe in these churches that allow a food and drinks in the sanctuary Amen. and people sitting there doing the preaching service, a sipping on a cup of coffee and eating a donut. Hey, if you want to eat, go home. Amen. Amen. This is a place. This is Amen. God's house. Amen. And the sanctuary ought to be clean. Amen. 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 The sanctuary uh, or to be rid of all uh, of these things. We ought to come in here uh, with a mind to serve God uh, uh, with an humbleness of heart uh, and a where we can fall down uh, upon our face uh, and to praise Him uh, above everything uh, and before He uh, is worthy. Uh, listen, do you know what they done in the temple uh, on the Sabbath day? Uh, sing a hymn. <laughs> Amen. But they would stand up for the reading of the whole word. Amen. And boy, they'd be in service for like four or five hours at a time. 
Amen. They had people that were sitting out in amongst the crowd. Amen. And as Ezra would read out of the law of Moses, he would read one section of it. Amen. And he had asked, are there any questions? Are there anybody that don't understand what we're talking about? Amen. And if somebody was in there like that, amen, they would raise their hand and they said, we have a question. They had runs in the groups of people that would take the law of Moses and they would explain to them what it meant, amen, to get everybody on the same track, amen. They said, you want to know why there's so many churches in America today. We're not all on the same page. Amen. Right. Hey, a lot of us not even reading out of the same book. That's the reason we need to be together upon this thing. So Nehemiah had this thing set up. And their worship maze would start at the sunset on a Friday. And it would end at the sunset on a Saturday. Amen. They would stand and they would read God's word. Honey, whenever they begin to praise Him and they begin to give glory to Him, you know how they would do it. It ain't like we do it today. Amen. People sit in the church and they'll raise their hand and they'll glorify God and some will holler Amen. Some will shout Hallelujah. Amen. That ain't the way they done it. Amen. They get out on all fours. Amen. And put their head down in the gear of ground. And then worship of the God of Israel and the God of Abraham. And they would lift up their hearts unto a living God. And they was watching over them. Amen. And everything was a going good. Amen. Just about the time you get everything going good. Here comes the death. Mm -hmm. Amen. You ever notice that? Amen. Amen. As long as you're having trouble, you're down and out and all pouty mouth. Amen. Amen. The old devil will leave you alone. Right. Amen. But boy, everything gets real fiery and everything gets real spiritual. Amen. Here comes the old devil. Amen. This thing he uses the things of this old world. Amen. If I, uh, last week I told you about the sheep gate. Amen. How the sheep gate was sanctified. And the sheep gate didn't have any bars on it. Amen. And it didn't have any locks on the door. It was a free passage. This is the way at the feast gate was at first. And then they had the merchants. Amen. Amen. The merchants, they could begin to come in on the Sabbath day. Amen. And then I had left her for a little while. Amen. And went down into Samaria, I think. And they had a guy by the name of Tabash. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what, he had. Uh, uh, Zephyrel, I think, uh, uh, married, amen, and they intermarried. Uh, and anyway, Tabash, uh, uh, while Nehemiah was gone, uh, they got set up uh, over the treasury, uh, amen, and they had actually built him uh, a chamber, uh, amen, up above the temple uh, uh, that he might be able to live, uh, amen. And you know what he done? Uh, uh, boy, greed will take you further and you want to go. Uh, you know, cost you more than you want to pay. Amen. Amen. And it'll cost you uh, and a sacrifice. Uh, he allowed Amen. them merchants uh, to come in on the Sabbath day uh, and to sell their feet uh, and to sell their hardware uh, there in the temple uh, of the living God uh, on the Sabbath day. Uh, and it's bad enough uh, and to do it through the week. Uh, but to do it on uh, the Sabbath So Nehemiah come back. Amen. Nehemiah come back into town. And boy, he got him upset. Amen. I'm going to use my imagination for a little while. He found out how Tabasha had got in there. Amen. And had that room up above the chambers. And you know what Nehemiah done? He went in there and packed all of his stuff up. 
Amen. He might have put it in a suitcase. He raised the wind and he threw everything that he owned out of the wind. Amen. Amen. And he told them, he told them, he said, you go down. Amen. You put some of my guards there at the feast day. Amen. I want you to build a door. I want you to put bars on it. Amen. I want you to put locks on it. Amen. And Nehemiah said, don't you know you're doing the very same thing that you've done before uh, that caused God uh, to turn his back on you. Uh, amen. He said, it's all right uh, for the feast market to bring their trade in uh, during the week. Uh, but whenever that sun begins to go down uh, on a Friday, I want you to go down. Uh, I want you to barricade the doors. Uh, I want you to put the locks on the doors. Uh, I don't wear the merchants. Uh, I'll have to stay on the outside uh, of the gate, amen, during uh, the Sabbath, amen. Uh, in other words, me and I said, uh, hey, we're going to clean the house uh, and we're going to get everything back in the order uh, uh, the way that God uh, wants it to run. Uh, do you want God to bless? Uh, do what He tells you. Uh, amen. In the house of God, uh, and God uh, will lay a blessing uh, upon you. Life. Amen. Amen. They begin to lock the doors. Amen. At the sunset on a Friday. Amen. And boy, they wouldn't unlock the doors until after the sun rises on a Sunday. Amen. Listen, they kept the Sabbath day holy. Amen. They kept the Sabbath day holy. God made everything in six days. Amen. And on the seventh day, He rested. Amen. And don't you think that God, amen, He wants us to take the holy Sabbath day, which we celebrate as a Sunday. Amen. The Sunday ought to be set aside. Amen. To worship God. Amen. In order to be set aside together into His temple. Amen. And to offer praises and worship unto Him. Amen. You don't need to come to church and wonder what time you're going to get out. You need to come to church and hope that God will let you in. Amen. 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 And let you enjoy the blessings <laughs> that fall down from the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Whenever I come across the creek of the Lord and the last thing on my mind it's when I'm going to get to go to the house. Honey, I come for business. Amen. I come to do business for the king. Amen. I come to serve him. I come to worship him. I come to adore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Boy, I tell you, if we're here all day and you don't want to stay, I'll cut the lights off. Nehemiah said this feast gate has just about run us. This feast gate has allowed trade to come in on the day that is holy before the Lord. And Nehemiah said we're not going to put up with it. Amen. We're going to put locks on it. Amen. And we're going to secure it. Amen. Oh, some of them raised the fuss. Amen. They stand on the outside of the gate. Amen. That's one thing about the devil. Amen. If you lock him out of your heart, he's still going to stand right That's beside right. the door. Amen. Amen. So if you open it up for somebody, he'll be able to slip in. Amen. Amen. And boy, they gather around the gate. Amen. And you know what Nehemiah told them? Amen. Nehemiah told them and said, boys, I'm going to tell you one more time. This thing is off limits for selling. It's off limits for the marketplace on the Sabbath day. And you keep a gathering around the door and a causing havoc to the city while we're in the temple. And Nehemiah said, I'm coming after you. Amen. In other words, you do it again. Amen. And you're going to have a price to pay because I'm coming after you. Amen. You're not disturbing at God's holy place. Amen. That's the way we need to be today. Get in the way. We're coming after you. Amen. This is a holy place of God. All that is meant for worship. Amen. Amen. The second thing that we see is in the feast gate. Amen. I remember whenever Jesus came here upon the face of the earth. 
Amen. And he began to walk. And he began to talk. Amen. I remember him walking by the Sea of Galilee. Amen. There were some old fishermen boys there. Amen. Their look was about like mine sometimes. <laughs> Amen. I'll go down to the lake and I'll throw my line in. And I'll stand there for hours at a time looking at that line and say, Hey, ain't you never going to move? Amen. Amen. And then I'll reel it in. I'll throw it another direction. Amen. Amen. And after about five or six hours, amen, they ain't never, never no tug on the line. I just reel it in, throw the bait away and come home. Amen. They call it a wasted day. Amen. We see Peter and ma'am, as they said, along beside the sea. Amen. And they was there a fishing. Amen. And they wasn't a having any luck. Amen. And then up the shoreline. Amen. Come Jesus. Amen. amen. And boy, I tell you what, Abel looked over and I I believe Jesus about like he always does. He starts a conversation out with them in a usual manner. Amen. He might have asked them, said, boys, are you having any luck today? I believe old Peter said, well, Lord, uh, well, we ain't caught anything. And Jesus said, well, why don't you pull in your net and throw it over on the other side? Amen. To see if you have any luck. And then you know what Jesus done? Jesus called them. Amen. Man, uh, he said, Come, he said, forsake your nets uh, and follow me, uh, and I'll make you fisherman of men. Amen. There's a, uh, there's a light uh, in there. Amen. If you go to the Corinthians, uh, uh, the book of the first Corinthians, uh, uh, God says, I call them that are weak uh, uh, the confound uh, of the wise. Amen. A uh, uh, brother here he called uh, uh, some old fishermen. Amen. Uh, uh, boy, they might not have known their very much about him, uh, and that they learned to love him. Uh, amen. They learned to walk by him. Uh, and they learned to stand by him. Uh, and they learned that whatever he done, uh, he done it in truth. Uh, and he done it in righteousness. Uh, amen. You say, then the apostles uh, uh, take right off. Uh -uh. Uh, amen. They walked with Jesus uh, uh, for some time. Uh, listen today. Uh, uh, before God uh, will ever put you to work. He'll let you walk with Him. He'll let you learn about Him. He'll let you get to know Him. Amen. And then He'll send you out. Hey, brother, what's wrong today is we got a lot of people trying to go out and they don't know nothing. And they need to sit and to learn about the good news before they go out and try to help us somebody else. Amen. We find that whenever Jesus called the apostles, He was with them. He showed them what God's Word was all about. He showed them the power that was in God's Word. He showed them that through the spoken Word, amen, that the blind man could see. He showed them through the spoken Word that the crippled man could walk. Amen. He showed them through the Word of God. Amen. That that one that everybody else should reject. Him. Amen. That God could take a hold of and create him and put him in his right mind. Amen. And give him a sense of praise in God. Amen. You remember the legion. Amen. That was at the tombs. He had chains all around him. Amen. And people said he's crazy. He's out of his mind. Amen. This scene. And then here come Jesus. Amen. What did them old demons do? Boy, they begin to holler out. Amen. They, they said, Lord, we don't want anything, amen, to do with you, buddy. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, boy, you get God inside of you, and the devil will have to tuck tail and yeah. run whenever you get to talking about him. Uh, amen. And Jesus took this man uh, that the whole community was afraid of, uh, and they were scared to death of. Uh, and Jesus walked right up to him. Uh, amen. And boy, by the time God got done, uh, he was clothed and in his right mind and he was a praise in the Lord. It's like a woman at the well and they committed adultery and fornication. And poor news was all over town. And the women wouldn't have anything to do with her. And then she met a man sitting on the well and his name is Jesus. And she left her water pot.
upon and she come running back down into the city saying come and see a man that's told me everything that I ever done. Amen, boy, I tell you what, why all this? It was a learning process for the apostles that they might be able to work for this man called Amen. Jesus. Amen. We see a man in the water, in the fish gate, that he called the lowly to serve him. He called people a lot of high ranks. Hey Amen. You might call these people like middle class citizens. And some of them was probably poor. Probably some of them didn't have much education. Hey Amen. But Jesus called them. Hey Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what, after they spent some time with Jesus, hey Amen. Boy, you remember there in the book of Acts, hey Amen, as Jesus was getting ready to go up. Amen. What did the Lord tell him? He said, y'all need to go back to the upper yeah. room and wait for the promise of the Father. Amen. The promise of the Father is that they was going to be endued. Amen. Endued with what? They was going to be endued with power. Amen. From on high. The Holy Spirit. Amen. And we find Peter there. Amen. Boy started out a little old fisherman by the Sea of Galilee. Amen. One that had walked with Jesus. One that had told the Lord, Lord, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And in the next breath, cussed him three times. Amen. And then knelt down and cried like a baby and said, God, forgive me. And the one that had a high temper. Amen. That cut the soldiers here all and the Lord picked it up and put it back on even though they was going to crucify him and that little old red hot headed boy a man that was in a boat when Jesus come he said Lord if that's you bid me to come to you on the water and Peter uh, stepped out of the water amen and he began to walk to Jesus amen and people say well that was pretty enough well I got one thing to say at least Peter was in the boat there's a lot of people not even in the Mode. Amen. A lot of people uh, wasn't even there uh, to experience it. Uh, but we find Peter, uh, amen, when he come uh, endued with the power uh, from all high. Uh, and he began to preach uh, at the day of Pentecost. Uh, they thought, man, uh, this man's crazy. Uh, this man's unlearned. Uh, this man, what in the world uh, is he doing? Uh, but we find out. Uh, Sometimes uh, the world don't understand uh, why we act the way we act. Uh, amen. There is a good news uh, about the whole thing. Uh, God has a plan. Amen. 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 When we find out after Peter got in, dude, with the power from on high. You remember how Jesus healed the blind, healed the lame, caused the deaf to hear. Amen. You remember the sick that they had in the book of Acts? You remember how the one lady said in the book of Mark when she heard that Jesus was coming down the road? She said, Boy, if I could just get to where I can touch the hem of his garment. I know everything is going to be all right. Amen. In the book of Acts, Jesus had already ascended. Amen. As he went up, amen, the Holy Spirit come down and it empowered the apostles. Amen. Boy, now instead of Jesus, amen, they come walking down the road. They hear about Peter. Amen. They hear about Peter coming down the road. And you know what them folks said? Oh, I'll get the sick. Amen. They get the sick and lay out beside the road. And he's a coming down. Amen. Tonight. Oh, Peter's a coming. He's a fisherman that walked with Jesus. He's different now. And there's something different about him. He's a little bit of power uh, on his life. Uh, uh, praise God, he don't have to touch him. Uh, uh, just if he walks by uh, and he's shining, I uh, uh, cast over all of it. Uh, it'll be made whole. Uh, and it will be need today uh, uh, to be endued uh, with the power uh, from on high. Amen. 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 But Jesus took the weak to confound the wise. God don't need mighty, mighty men. 
He just needs men that will believe. God don't need the forces of this world. He just needs people that believes that He is who He says He is. Amen. And it all started at the feast gate. You say, preacher, that was in the Old Testament. Well, you know, I think it's in the book of Matthew that Jesus had come into the temple one day. And what would these men do? They'd come back through the feast gate and they had their table set up and they had their merchandise set up and Jesus come in. And you know what he done? He took a whip. Amen. And boy, he went in. I believe that's one time you could actually say Jesus was angry. Amen. He come in. He'd take his foot and he'd kick the tables over. Amen. He would destroy their stuff that they was selling. And he took a whip. He said, this is supposed to be called the house of prayer. Right. And ye have made it a den of thieves. <coughs> Amen. And boy, Jesus began to strike them. And you know what he done? He run them out of the temple. Sure. Amen. Just like Nehemiah done. Amen. Nehemiah said to lock them out. And boys, if you create one more ruckus, I'm a coming after you. Amen. Listen today. Jesus is really concerned about his church today. Amen. About his bride today. Might I tell you, we're not a money making organization. That's Amen. Right. This evening we are something that is funded by the grace of God. Amen. Tonight. And boy, I'm telling you what, when you get out of them rims, Amen. Tonight, I believe Jesus sort of looks down and says, uh uh, no, man. We need to get back to the old past. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what. So it all started out at the feast day. Now I'm going to close like this. You might be here today. You might be a lonely fisherman. Amen. You might be one that is sort of out there by yourself. Your luck might not be going very well. Your fortune might not be what you think it ought to be. You might not have a lot of freedom. Hey man, it's Peter and I am done. I know whenever I come back off of the river, the first thing I do after I put my pole up, I usually go get in the shower. Hey man, and I try to get that feast steak off of me. Boy, I tell you what, if you're in this old world, you stink in the nostrils of God. Your habits are not pleasing to the Lord. Your life is not pleasing to the Lord. Amen tonight just as Peter and Andrew and Ham as the Lord called them on that day, honey. And let me tell you something. If you let God have His way today, He can bathe you with the Holy Spirit and to wash you with His Word. And you too, honey, can become a fisherman of men and have the love of God abiding on your life. Amen. Amen. It all starts <coughs> with Jesus. It all ends <coughs> with Jesus. Amen. And everything in between is about Jesus. Amen. Amen. The feast day. And how Jesus called them lonely fishermen. You say, preacher, you ain't never been where I'm at. I wouldn't bet on that. Mm -hmm. I've been a lot of places. A lot of places, if the devil had his way, I'd been dead. I had a man one time I was in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, at the wrong time. And I had a man <coughs> pull a gun on me one night. And Brother Jimmy, the barrel of that gun was about that far from my forehead. I looked down that little pistol. Man, it looked like a cannon. <laughs> 
And I thought to myself, boy, my mind was a race a thousand miles an hour. How in the world am I going to get myself out of this mess? And boy, I'm telling you what I seen my whole life. Just flash before, boy, that man was mad. Mm -hmm. Boy, God, he was mad. I was scared to death. Man, my knees was a jumble together. Hey, man, I thought to myself, Lord, if I get myself out of this mess, I ain't never going to get in another one exactly like it. Mm -hmm. And God, by His grace <coughs> and His mercy, caused that man to change his mind. Amen. I didn't stand a chance. And boy, I was lacking. I was lacking what God wanted to do for me. God spared my life and He gave me another opportunity Amen. that I might be saved. I come to Him, I've learned, ignorant of His ways, but He took me in mm -hmm. and He clothed me and He fed me and He washed me and He put on a robe, put a robe on me. Amen. He said, now I'm going to let you be my servant. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you walk with me. Amen. Amen. And he put me in the school to learn. Amen. You say, preacher, you was in the school to learn, and I sure was. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, what did you go to? I said, well, it was a little old church out there in Sage Springs every Sunday morning. I come in, I found myself sitting on the pew. Amen. I'd sit there and I'd listen to God's word. Amen. they give the altar call and I'd come and I'd pray. Amen. The next service, you know where I was at? I was right back there sitting on that pew. Amen. I was learning. I was learning things about God. Amen. And if I didn't understand something, I'd go to the pastor and I'd say, I don't understand. Can you help me? Amen. He'd take the time to open up the word of God and to show me. Amen. And boy, I was in training for several years. Amen. And then all at once, God said, now. He said, now that I've taught you a little bit. Amen. Now that I've given you a little bit to know about me, I want you to go out and begin to feast. Amen. I want you to go out and begin to feast. Now, you got the right kind of bait. Amen. Yeah. To use. Amen. This evening, I, I learned a long time ago in growing up. Amen. Sometimes if you want to, if you if you want to go the cheap way out and try to catch you a cat feed, amen, you're going to use a night crawler. Amen. And boy, sometimes, if you want to go the high road, you get them little old chicken livers, amen, and you put on that string, and amen, and throw out there. I even had some of that stuff to blow on, and amen, to make it smell like blood, amen. I tried every trick in the world, amen, and to be a fisherman, but amen, and I guess what? God taught me how to be a fisherman of men, amen. amen. He said, you don't have to use but one kind of bait, and that is the Word of God, because the Word of God He'll do whatever, everything else fails to do. God's word will always come true. Amen. Amen. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Jesus. I give you the word that I am. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Are you standing alongside the road that don't know how to fish? Won't you come to me? You might be in here this morning, your nets <coughs> might be in. Won't you tell me? See, Selena, come on back to the piano and Christian, y'all get a song ready. <coughs> you might be here this morning, you might say, Preacher, I've tried everything in the world. There ain't nothing works if you ever tried Jesus. If you ever tried Jesus. The Lord said, Taste of me. See that I'm not good. The Lord said, Try me. Have you tried him? <coughs> Have you tried him? Every head bowed, every Christian man, woman prayed, nobody looked for him. <coughs> 